Good morning. Happy New Year. <laughs> Come on in from the corridor. Just want to welcome you to service this morning on this first day of 2022, which, uh, what? <laughs> which is going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be an awesome year. Um, Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Even now it springs forth. Um, our God is a God of newness, um, new beginnings and new things. And uh, even Lamentations 3, it says, His mercies are new every morning. Uh, Ezekiel 36, 26 says, He'll give you a new heart and a new spirit. Um, 2 Corinthians says that if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. And Psalm 40 says that he put a new song in my mouth. There's no doubt about it. God doesn't renovate or upcycle or recycle. He makes things new. Aren't you glad he makes things new? Let's just stand and let's worship this morning. Um, Father, we just thank you, God, for new beginnings. We thank you for new mercies. We thank you for new life in Christ. We pray, Heavenly Father, today you would just move by the power of your Holy Spirit in this place. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
the voice of my Savior once again. Where'd my soul be without you, son? He was my Savior. Rest in the thought of you watching over me. All I need is you.
Yes, Lord. Let's just sing that chorus one more time. Can we sing that together? Sing His praise to His people. Sing His praise, you heavenly hosts. Sing His praise in the sanctuary. Sing His praise, oh my soul. Sing His praise, you His people. so awesome as the worship team just keeps playing here you know i just feel just so just really feel the presence of god and i'm just excited excited for i know the way god wants to move in our hearts and you know what can you not feel that when you praise god when you give that heartfelt praise to god can you not feel his presence coming and just flooding the room god inhabits the praises of his people amen and we are so thankful for that this morning. Praise God. Just as we're in this place of worship, um, we're just going to take a moment to receive our offering. And we just want to thank you all for your faithful giving. And uh, as we uh, prepare for a new year, at the top of the new year, you have the opportunity to sow seeds of faith. Amen. You know, every time we give to God, whatever it is, our time, our money, our talents, we are sowing. The Bible says we're sowing every time we do that. And he promises that what we sow in faith will reap a harvest. Amen. God is so good. So this morning, as we prepare to take the offering, there's a couple ways you can give. Of course, they're going to pass the baskets around to you, or you can give through e-transfer, which is uh, just go to phclc.books at saskatel.net. And we just pray that God just stirs your heart to give in faith this morning because he wants to bless you in 2022. Amen. So let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you, God, you draw near to us when we worship you. We thank you, you draw near to us, God, and you, you, you prepare a harvest for us, God, when we sow seeds of faith. So God, as we give today in faith, Father, we pray you would just multiply our gift and cause it to bring you abundant glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, Pray Harvest. It's great to see you. If this is your first time here at Pray Harvest, welcome. We hope you consider becoming part of our church family. We invite you to sign up for a discipleship journey, get plugged into home groups, or sign up to serve in one of our ministries. We'd love to connect with you today. You can fill out the Connect card in the seat pocket in front of you and take it to the Connect Center after the service at the coffee bar. We'd love to meet you and give you a welcome gift. If you're watching online, you can fill out our Connect card online at connect.phclc.org. And if you've recently accepted Christ, we would love to celebrate that choice with you and send you the booklet, How to Grow as a Christ Follower. Just put your address in the comments of the online Connect card or stop by the Connect Center and we'll get you a copy. Thanks for worshiping with us today. Starting in January 2022, Harvest House of Prayer will happen just once a month on the first Wednesday of each month. This is just a temporary change to help make room in everyone's schedule to participate in the weekly home groups. Each month, we will be having three days of corporate prayer and fasting, ending with Harvest House of Prayer at 7 p.m. on the first Wednesday of the month. So this January, corporate prayer and fasting will be January 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Our focus will be on personal revival, church unity, and the new season that's upon us. We will fast and pray for three days and then we will gather together at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, January 5th for prayer and worship. We hope you can join us in this important time. There will be men's fellowship on the third Saturday of every month. The next one is Saturday, January 15th at 8 a.m. here at Prairie Harvest. 
As you know, we are currently accepting applications for the position of youth pastor. This position is approximately 25 to 30 hours per week, and a successful applicant should have good leadership, communication, administrative skills, and should be able to work well with both senior and junior youth. Applicants with experience in youth ministry will have preference. Please submit your resumes to Pastor Des Klingspawn at desbox66 at gmail.com or in person. We will be accepting applications until February 2022. Home groups. We have over 15 fabulous home group leaders signed up for the new year. You can join a group by filling out this simple form online at groups.phclc.org. Just type groups.phclc.org directly into your web browser and fill up the form. We hope you'll take time to be part of a home group starting the second week of January in 2022. All home groups will be studying the Live Before You Die series. Do you wonder if God has a plan for your life? How can we know what His plan is and what might be hindering us from fulfilling? filling it. These questions and many others will be answered in this powerful and engaging study. So go to groups.phclc.org to sign up or stop by the table in the foyer and someone will be happy to help you. Well, that's all I have for announcements at this time. Happy New Year, everyone, and God bless. Awesome. Got lots of stuff going on as we go into the new year. Um, Just want to take a minute to welcome anyone who might be here for the very first time this morning. If this is your first time at Prairie Harvest, we just want to say welcome. We're really glad to have you. And also, we have a welcome gift for you. As you heard in the video announcements, there you can uh, fill out a Connect card, which is either in the seat back pocket in front of you, or you can just do it on your phone. Go to connect.pslc.org, fill it out there, and take it to the coffee bar. And someone would love to say hi to you and give you a welcome gift. Okay, so this week, starting tomorrow... Um, we are going to be doing three days of prayer and fasting while our leadership team is. And uh, we just want to invite you to join us in that um, through this next few months into the new year here. We're going to be starting off every month with three days of prayer and fasting and then corporate worship and prayer on the Wednesday evening. So we really want to encourage you as the Holy Spirit leads you to participate in that. I feel like if if you do, I know that you'll really be blessed. God will really meet you, and it will be, really be an encouraging time for you. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that uh, the home group sign up. If you haven't signed up for a home group, uh, please do. You don't want to miss out. We're going to be doing the Live Before You Die Bible study, and we're, it's going to be doing it as a church-wide campaign. So all of our groups are going to be doing the same material at the same time. And so if you need assistance with signing up for that, um, all you got to do is go to groups. groups.phclc.org on your and your web browser, like it said in the video announcement, or else if you need some assistance, I think probably Stefan could assist you at the table out in the. He's not here right now. I don't see him, but we have a table out there. So if you need help, um, someone can assist you there. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I want to mention before we have a little special announcement here this morning is uh, just really want to commend Anna and Love's Pantry. Uh, they gave out over 100 Christmas dinners. Do you want to come up, honey? On uh, Christmas Day. So Pastor Dad just wants to say a couple words. Yeah, just want to do a real plug for Love's Pantry and uh, Anna and the whole team who uh, have been working hard over this last year. Could we just have Anna and the team just stand wherever you are? Those of you that are here that, have, that are helping, volunteering with Love's Pantry, that's Anna at the back. and Yeah. Some others. I got some stats from Anna, thanks guys, um, that over 2000, over this year, 2021, uh, Love's Pantry served over 2,500 breakfasts, over 1,200 jars of soup, and about 130 Christmas dinners this Christmas on Christmas Day. And uh, wow, isn't that awesome? Let's just thank the Lord and just bless the crew there. Bless you guys for your faithfulness and uh, your serving. And I just want to encourage you, too, that if you would like to get involved with Love's Pantry, you could see Anna. And I know that they're doing every Wednesday breakfast here at the church. And if you'd like to get involved serving, helping in the morning, or even with baking some things, just talk to Anna, and I'm sure she'd be just uh, thrilled to, to get some uh, give you some information and, and get you involved in that somehow. Right on. 
Awesome. And also, um, we don't have a specific update, but I know that the Love Bus gave out over 60 food hampers also on Christmas Eve. So maybe we can get some more details from them, but that was awesome as well. So you guys can give them a hand too. <clears throat> So awesome things are happening here as people step out in obedience to Jesus inside of them. Amen. It's really great. There's one more thing I want to mention. Uh, it wasn't in the announcements, but um, we are continuing to have the personal prophetic ministry. And the next one is going to be on January 23rd after our service. So if you'd like to start off the new year with the word from God, I just encourage you pray, press in and register for personal prophetic ministry. It only takes about... 20 minutes or so after the service, and you can just go to eventbrite.ca, go to Yorkton Events, and search Personal Prophetic Ministry, and you'll be able to register there really easily. So you can also take that in. So right now, we have a special announcement about our youth ministry. There's so many awesome things happening. Clyde and Alexa, where are you? Come on up, you guys. Okay, so a lot of you will know who this is. Um, but some of you might not. This is Clyde and Alexa Mariano. And as you know, Trent and Teresa, who've been overseeing our youth ministry for the last couple of years, they just recently transitioned out of that. And thank you to them for such a devoted service over the last couple of years, few years. It's been awesome. We really appreciate that. But Clyde and Alexa are going to step in right now. Um, as you see, we have the position open. Uh, for, um, you know, someone to apply for the staff position, but they are going to be taking on the youth ministry going into January here. So, what's that, honey? Yes, on, on, a, <laughs> on an interim basis for the time being till we find our successful applicant. So, would you guys, you can take your masks off so everybody can see your smiling faces. <laughs> so, we're really excited, parents. If you have youth, teenage kids, please connect with Clyde and Alexa. They're going to be trying to seek you all out, but there's a few of you. And so we really want to just get youth ministry rolling off to a good start. There was an insert in your bulletin this week, or, the, or this morning, I should say, that details what's happening over the month. So get in touch with them, but I'm just going to let them say a few words. I can say something. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, my name is Clyde, and this is my wife, Alexa. And uh, we're so thankful for this opportunity just to, to fill in the gaps, um, because we do value and see that this is a huge need for, uh, for the youth ministry, right? For, for the youth in our community, uh, friends and family. I think uh, there's, there's such a huge opportunity there to sow in. And, and, and if you feel like, I would say, if you feel like you really want to help, talk to me, maybe Cheryl and Des, you know, just, uh, you know, if you really feel called to, to help out in some sort of capacity. There's always, there's so many opportunities in the church, really, to, to help out. And so, and if you have any kids, like, I think it's ages 12 to grade 12, and they're not doing anything at your house, call me on Fridays. <laughs> so, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Let's just pray for them, okay? Um, Father, we just thank you for Clyde and Alexa. God, we thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit inside of them. We thank you, Father, for their willingness to step forward and serve. And I know you're going to bless them, and I know you're going to bless the youth ministry. So together, God, as a church family, we just extend our prayers uh, for grace, for provision, for blessing, for empowerment. And we just pray mighty things that you will do through in the youth ministry this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Right on. It's so awesome to see. Change is good, and you know, new year, things are changing. I uh, think that, uh, you know, we all need to have an expectation that change is going to come, and when it comes, we, we want to embrace it, because it's probably one of those things that no matter how hard we try, we're never going to be able to stop changes from happening. Things are just going to change. They're going to shift. Things move. And uh, man, sometimes God really does incredible things when we just open our heart in small ways to do some things different. And uh, before I jump into my message, um, I just felt during worship time, I was just feeling just an excitement in my heart. And when I saw, you know, me and Ramsey up there doing worship. 
uh, rocking it out. I wish I had my mullet. <laughs> and uh, I could thrash it around a little bit there. I was feeling highly motivated. I just have to say something. Ramsey, when you were playing the electric guitar, Des was closing his eyes. This was a holy moment. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Yeah, what do you do with us old 80s uh, rocker guys? Right? But uh, just felt really inspired that God was doing some new things. And I just felt like for you, Ramsey and May, and also uh, Ron Yell and Abigail, God is just doing something on you guys as couples. And I know, Abigail, you weren't up on the stage, but when I saw Ron Yell there, it was just like you two are connected Ramsey and May, you two are connected, and God is wanting you to step out into some new things this year, to be open to stepping into some new stuff, because as you do, God's going to meet you in those new things, and new doors are going to bring some awesome opportunity and fruit that will develop and grow you, but also it's going to bring glory and praise to God. There's going to be some real fruitfulness in that. And actually, I felt that over you, Adam and Ange, too. That uh, this year, it's like God's going to open some, something new for you to do. And don't weigh these things out by whether or not you feel able or qualified. Weigh out by asking God if it's something that he wants you to do. And I believe that when you do, and I believe those opportunities are coming, jump into them. And if that applies to anyone else here, praise God, take it and run with that too because I don't believe it's just limited to a few. Um, and man, with the new year coming, who knows what's going to happen this year, 2022. But I believe that there is some significant, some really powerful things that God wants to do in 2022. That almost rhymes even. Man, now I'm feeling it. Woo! <laughs> So step in. And I just want to pray. You join me? Let's just stand. Let's just be a little aerobic this morning for a moment. We'll stand and you can sit down again and then I'll keep you sitting for a while. But Lord Jesus, we just come before you today. And Lord, we just cover. Uh, I covered just these couples that have called out that I believe you're just uh, singling out here this morning. And Lord, I just pray the grace of God over each one of them, that Lord, they would say yes to you, that they would uh, be sensitive to you. And when those opportunities come before them, Lord, even though they might not feel confident in their own strength, they would know that Lord, you're, you're with them and that they would say yes and that they would step in. And God, for everyone else here, all of us, Lord God, we just want to be open to you. Lord, this is a new year. Anything is possible. Lord, we leave 2021 and everything that took place in that year behind. And Lord, we want to embrace you in the now. And God, we pray that you would go with us, that you would soften our hearts, and that you would allow us to see those things that you are prompting us to do, maybe even in new ways in this year. And I just pray that life and that blessing over this people, over all of us here today, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Well, I'm excited about what I want to share today. And it's, uh, the title of my message is called, I Am Your Very Great Reward, or depending on the translation of Bible that you're reading, it's a, it's a direct quote from Genesis 15 and verse 1. This is God speaking to Abraham, and he says, I am your exceeding great reward. And uh, it says there in Genesis 15, verse 1, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, or Abram, in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, and your very great, or your exceedingly great reward. And uh, there's a lot of story in that passage there that precedes it and a lot that goes on after it. But I believe the heart of what God was saying to Abraham at that time, Abraham, was, I've made you a lot of promises. 
I've spoken a lot of life and destiny over you. But make no mistake, Abraham, I am your great reward. It's me. Your great reward, it's found in me, in my relationship with you, with who I am and who I want to reveal myself to you. And it's a, it's a perspective challenge and it's a heart check kind of a thing, not in a negative way, but in a really positive one. And when we look at the scripture and uh, Ephesians chapter 1, and I believe verse 17, this is a part of what we would call an apostolic prayer. If you come out to House of Prayer on Wednesday nights, this is a scripture that I love to pray because it applies to just about everything. And it goes on. I'm not going to share the whole thing. But Ephesians 1 verse 17, it says this. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. This is a letter to the church at Ephesus. And he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And so many times in our Christian walk, we think that getting saved, being born again, wow, that's fantastic. And now it's all about everything else. The Bible, this passage of Abraham, these apostolic prayers, if you look at many of them, they, they do the same thing. They direct us back to the centrality of who Jesus is, of who God is. And it's, it's not saying, oh man, I'm, you know, if I could rephrase this. Paul isn't saying, I keep asking that God would just help you to get it right, Des. I keep asking that God would just let you do a better job at what you're doing. I just keep praying that God would help you to, you know, raise your performance from a six to an eight. I say that because that's sometimes how I pray, right? God, in my life, I wish I could just move from being a five here, move me up to being able to function as a six or a seven. Or I wish I could just get my stuff together. The Apostle Paul, when he's praying to the Lord for the church at Ephesus, he's saying, this is my prayer. I'm praying that God would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you would know God better. That you would have a revelation of who he is. That you would come to know who he is. Because with that, everything else and anything else is entirely and completely possible. So this Abraham, what God is saying to Abraham here is don't forget all this stuff that I've promised you. I am your great reward. It's me. Me in your life. My relationship with you. A.W. Tozer said this talking about the love of God. He said, the love of God is one of the greatest realities of the universe. It's a pillar upon which the hope of the whole world rests. But it is a personal and an intimate thing too. God does not love populations. He loves people. He loves not masses, but men. The personal, the individual God, who, and we hear it throughout the scripture, he was the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The question in our generation, is he the God of Des and of Cheryl, the God of Stephan, the God of Grant? That's our path. That's our journey to walk that out. That's our purpose are we going to give lip service to something or like Abraham with all the things that God asked him to do, but yet he did keep where his greatest focus, his greatest reward was on who God was in his life and that walking with God. This passage begs the question, what reward or prize or success am I giving my attention to? 
my devotion, my strength, my focus, my money? What am I spending myself on? And secondly, is this, as a reward, something that I will be glad that I spent so much of my time and energy upon when I'm finished my short time on earth? And lastly, will God be pleased if I use my life to pursue this goal, this prize? Those are just questions. I've been asking myself those things, and it's good. I, I, uh, we need to reevaluate. The Scripture says we need to. When it talks in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about the Lord's Supper, it says, if you had examined yourself, I wouldn't have to. Because God would tell each and every one of us what he wants to adjust if we would just simply ask him and, and examine ourselves. But he said, because you don't, that's why we're having problems. I'm not saying we're having problems, but I know I have problems in my own life at times. And when it boils down to it, at times, I need to adjust myself. And this is one of the areas that I continually need to keep coming back to and adjusting. Am I on track? Am I in tune? Am I walking the right way? Am I walking on the right road? Am I taking the narrow path or a wide path? Am I counting a cost or am I coasting? Am I tired and so trying to find an easier route for a little while, take a breather, you know? Am I pressing in? I'm being true to what I know is important. This begs the the clarifying of there are primary and secondary rewards or blessings or successes that we can seek in life. You know, when Jesus was training the disciples, walking with them those three years that he did, he called them to find their identity in their relationship with him instead of on what they did or what people said or how people viewed them. He, he always referred them back to that their identity, their value was found in their knowing him, in being loved by God, in being part of the family of faith. And, you know, it's common at times in our lives as Christians to we get, we get tired that term burnout, you know, often is said, you know, I'm just feeling, man, burnt out and, and feeling stressed out and I'm feeling played out and I just don't have the heart or the energy for things anymore. And, you know, I believe that I can see where that happens. It's, I believe it's happened to me at times in my life when my mindset is focused on the wrong areas. Because when I am, you know, and the disciples would know this, they, they were continually meeting people. They were traveling with Jesus. They encountered things and, you know, problems and situations and strange things. And when we are doing life and trying to serve Jesus with a big hole in our own heart that needs to be filled for validation, not of our performance or to be liked by people or to want to be successful, to want to be seen as successful, that will wear you out. That will kill you. And we need to, as God's people, know the, and have that foundation of we are the loved children of God. And he holds us with affection in his hand and in his care. And whether I succeed at maybe today sharing a great message or whether I share a fiver or a fourer, <laughs> the fact of the matter that I am loved by God allows me to walk off this stage and go and keep pressing and keep trying and keep doing what I'm doing because it's not about whether or not I am the best in everyone's eyes. It's that I'm doing what God has asked me to do to the best of my ability, and I'm doing it out of love for Him. And I believe God wants to redefine success 
or what it is to be blessed in our own hearts, in all of our hearts. And he wants us to be, have a mindset and identity that's rooted in the love of God. Abraham is the father of our faith. That's what Romans 14, 16, 4, 16, pardon me, tells us. He is an example to us. He's the father of the faith. He's the one that all of us as believers have to look to as that patriarch of our faith. And God said to him that day, Abram, I am your great and exceeding reward. Out of everything, it's me. It's me with you that you need to set your heart on. Our primary reward as a believer, as a Christian, is Jesus himself. A living and real relationship with God. When we receive his, his love, when we love him back in return, when he reveals to us things about himself and things about his heart, things about his emotions, when he causes our hearts to burn because we've spent time with him, that is where the greatest reward is found. All these things that we have around us and even all these problems at times that we have to solve and, you know, we need to work at things. We need to get some things done. But with all that stuff still being there, it's not going to go away the greater portion, the greater part needs to be found first in knowing that he wants to be our great reward and that he wants us to live our lives in view of that. Priscilla Shearer, she's a Christian actress, she said this, I like this quote. It's, she, she said, Intimacy with Jesus is the cure for any situation. Intimacy with Jesus is the cure for any situation. 2022, let's begin to walk in such a way that we don't let the situation wag our tail, but we allow the intimacy that we have with Jesus to be the means by which we find the solutions to the situations and the problems that we face and experience. I tell you, that's how we practically walk out this greatest reward that we're to be given. Focusing primarily on secondary things or secondary rewards, it hinders the focus on the primary one. You know, when things go really good, you know, with our with our job, or let's say, you know, we're a worship leader, and we really rocked it out, and people were, yeah, it's like, oh, man, God, oh, he's so good, yeah, whoo, rock in, you know, but then what happens when, oh, 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 wrong, oh, oh, it's like, well, then you got to quit, right? Because I'm terrible. Did this in front of people. Oh, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you. Oh, there's something to that. It's one thing living a life. It's another thing living on a stage when you, your mistakes people see and they can pick apart. I tell you, oh. But when our heart is fixed on those things, it becomes all about having to do them perfectly and rightly and we can be riding that roller coaster because, man, we're weak. We're flesh. Ah, we smell. If we don't put stick on, bad things happen. You know, we are, we are just like so fragile and weak. More so, I tell you, this fast coming up, you think you're strong. Fast for two days. Oh, I'm so hungry. I can't get out of bed. I got a headache. It's like, oh. I tell you, one of the 
great things I found with fasting is it shows me who I really am. It's like, my God, am I ever weak and pitiful. <laughs> Do I ever need the grace of God in my life? Because if all that gets taken away from me is just a few meals, I turn into this whiny, crabby, sore little guy that can't do anything. And it's like, it's a humbling that we need. And God says, yeah, I know I made you. You're made out of dirt. Buddy, dirt. Why are you expecting some lofty thing? I tell you, those are realities. God wants to reveal to our heart, not to, to punish us, but uh, allow us to see with clarity how much we really do need him. Because when we see how much we really do need him, need him, we can begin to do what the Apostle Paul is doing here. He's praying, God, I pray a spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowing you, that they would come to see you and know you for who you are. We need that. David said, one thing I ask from the Lord, and one thing alone do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. What's he doing? He's saying, God, you are my great reward. He was a king. He was a conqueror, a warrior. He had so many things that he could do and could do well under his belt and expectations put on. But he said, you know, this is what I'm chasing after. This is what I really want. It's God to behold you, to be where you are, to see you and to ask you questions. Sitting at your feet, hearing from you, knowing your heart, knowing your thoughts, knowing how you feel on a matter. I tell you folks, we can do it now and rejoice later. Or fill our life with so many other things and have some regrets later. Because he is our very great and exceeding reward. Many times as Christians, we spend so much time and energy on dreaming and wishing that we were just better that we could just get our stuff together, the believing, you know, that if I could just get a handle on this area of my life or that area of things, or if I could just find that special someone and not be alone, or if I could just, you know, you know fill in the blanks. Better job, better house, better car, better this. If I could just get noticed, if, if the right people could just know me and I could know them, you know, then everything would change. Let me tell you, as a Christian, that you are part of a very elite group of people. 1 Peter 2.9 says that you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. If you are born again, you are in an elite class of people that are alive now, that have lived throughout the ages before us, that are never going to taste death, that are going to know and continue to know in this age, in this life, and in the eternity to come, what it is to walk with God. To see him, to know him, to walk him, to walk in his eternal kingdom of life and not face the punishment that our sins demand. You know, if there's approximately 8 billion people on the earth right now, I've heard it estimated roughly that there's about 1 billion Christians. So 1 billion out of this 8 billion right now, that no matter if you bombed at everything else in life, like if I came up here on Sunday and I tripped over this pulpit and fell over, heaven forbid, whacked my head on there, 
and could never hold a coherent thought again. But because I thought it was a good idea, I still kept preaching every week. <laughs> In God's eyes, I'd still be a success. Not for my preaching. <laughs> But because I was born again. And folks, we need to understand that knowing who we know, knowing the King of Kings, knowing the Lord of Lords, knowing this Jesus who died and gave himself for us and forgave us of our sins, it is a game changer on the highest degree. You know, there are kings and rulers and warriors throughout the ages who have lived lives and they have done incredible things. You are more successful. There have been businessmen, billionaires, millionaires who have lived. You are more successful than they are. And your eternity is established in the hand of God just because you know him. Isn't that incredible? It's not because, oh, I got this, or hey, I got that. And you know, secondary blessings are great. You know, when the anointing of God comes upon somebody who preaches, it's a beautiful thing for the hearer, and for the preacher. Because you know that you are saying words and giving utterance to things that aren't your own. That your relationship with God is beginning to flow and he's using you to do something that you could never do on your own. It's powerful. But it's not to be the primary focus. You know, when things go right and you get that promotion, you get that job, you get that new vehicle, you get that house that you needed, those things are fantastic. When things work out in your relationships with people, when breakthroughs come, those things are awesome. But those things are secondary things, folks. They're secondary. Don't live your life in the secondary Live it in the primary. You know, there was a thief who was hanging on a cross next to Jesus. We don't know how many times he thieved or what else he did in his life. All we know that when Jesus was being crucified, there was two other men, and that one was a thief. And they both were mocking Jesus, but then he came and he turned and he said, you know what? I believe you are the Son of God. You shouldn't be hanging on this tree. I deserve to be here for what I did. You don't. He had faith in Jesus. He called out to him, and Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. That guy who lived a life of who knows what, one decision made, and he may be hung there for a few hours beside Jesus, but he ended up in paradise. He is a winner. He is a winner. Because of who he came to know. And it changed him for eternity, even though he had very little time to walk out any of that stuff in this life on earth. And I want to tell you, we need to begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. And we only do that. Folks, the only recipe that I know for changing the understanding of my heart, the lens which I see life and myself and other people through, is time with Jesus in his word. Time with Jesus in prayer. Time alone where I'm communing with God. I'm hearing his voice. I'm listening to him. I'm allowing him to reprogram me from the inside out. That is the great reward, folks. That's what he wants to do in our lives. He wants to root us and establish us in love. I heard a story. For more than 40 years, each week, a shy Welshman went to his neighbor's door and slipped a love note underneath. 
Because of an argument years before, she refused to speak to the man, but finally, after writing 2,184 love letters with no response of any kind, the 74-year-old man went to the door, knocked, and asked the 74-year-old woman to marry him. And much to his surprise, she said yes, and they tied the knot. This is much the same way the love of God works. He persistently shows his love for us, and even in the face of rejection, keeps coming. And this is what changes our lives from the inside out. Receiving that love of God. I tell you, when we receive it, then we want to give it. We want to return it back to him, and it begins this cycle of a relationship where we receive, we see, we understand, we get glimpses of who he is. It blows us away, it melts us, it softens hardened hearts, and it softens us, and it causes us to turn and respond to God with, I love you too, thank you, thank you. Blessing him back. And then if we continue to stay in that place, we receive inspirations and understandings of God through his word that he reveals to us. Have you ever had your heart burn? You were just maybe driving in your car. I know for me, I like driving in the car and putting either worship on or stuff like that and thinking about God. And it's like, man, sometimes I think the most anointed place, you know, some people like the shower. For me, it's the car. And it's like, wow. It's like, I wish I could, I could just preach right now. Because it's like, oh, God, you're so awesome. It's like, that's life. God is word and spirit, the scripture tells us in John. It's living. His word is alive. His spirit. These things are life, and they transform us from the inside out. And it's what we were created for, that relationship and fellowship with God. You know, failure and mistakes do not diminish your value to God. No matter where you have been, no matter what you have done or been through, God loves you and he still sees the value in you and he still wants you. Your value is not in what you did or didn't do. Your value is in who created you, who formed you, who sees you, who knows even better than we do what we were actually created for and created to be, what we were designed to become. The one who sees us sees that value, and it's so different at times and most of the time than what and how we view ourselves. And I tell you, you only get that vision by spending time with God alone. Paul said this. He said, I want to know Christ, Philippians 3.10, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, to become like him in his death, and to somehow attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take a hold of that for which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to take to have taken a hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining on towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ. You know, I believe one of the greatest temptations you and I face and will ever face is the temptation to quit. We all face it. And over the years of pastoring, there have been many times where I have seen good Christian people called by God, anointed at times to do things. And, and you can see just the call and the passion, the love for God in their eyes, but that temptation to quit. When things don't work out right, when we make a mistake. Spoiler alert! We all make mistakes. 
You may not know this. I can be prone at times to be an idiot. <laughs> but God's okay with that. He told me. <laughs> Not to continue on being an idiot. <laughs> but I have a few passes in my pocket that I can blow it. I can make some mistakes. You know what God expects from me when I make a mistake? To say, God, I made a mistake. To own up to it, to confess it. To take that responsibility to ask for forgiveness and ask him, you know, I need healing in my life. <laughs> this world wrecks people. Sin wrecks and damages people. But what he expects from us when we make mistakes is just to come to him, confess our sins, bring them to the blood of Jesus, to the cross, and then leave them there. We press reset. And you know what? We are back to the very, the very beginning where I'm good with God. He loves me. He knows me. I'm walking in fellowship with God. We put ourselves on probation. We make ourselves wait. We make, I want to see a change first. Sometimes we do this with other people too. But I tell you, when we repent, God wants us to press that reset button and hop right back in and begin serving him, loving him, doing. The mistake I've seen so many people do is they have made mistakes or people have treated them badly. Spoiler alert! People will treat you badly. Christian people will treat you badly. You know what? God loves them. You know what? God loves you. You know what? You're still family. You know what? Keep going. It's a test of our faith and it's a test of our intimacy with God when we can be challenged by difficult things or harsh realities and still say, you know what? That's secondary. Primary is my relationship with God. And you know what? He loves me. I'm his favorite. He thinks about me. He knows how many hairs are on my head. And I don't know how many fell out in the sink this morning. But he knows exactly how many are there yet. Because he loves me that much. And so I keep on going and we keep on going. That brings honor to God, folks. That's what he's looking for. And he doesn't want us to quit. Jesus knew at the upper room when he had the last supper with his disciples. He told them there that he loved them and he told them that he knew that they were all going to betray him. But you know what? His love wasn't based on whether or not they didn't betray him. He actually, after, even told Peter, you know what, Peter? Peter was like, Lord, I'll never leave you. I'm your man. And he said, Peter, actually, you're going to deny me three times like tonight. But he didn't write Peter off. He said, but I'm praying for you. I told him, I'm praying that you will persevere, that you'll go through this, that you won't quit, you won't give up. You'll keep going. I know you're going to make mistakes. I know you're made of dirt. I made you. I know things don't always go your way. But if you keep your eyes on me and know that my love for you is real, you will keep on going. And that's your greatest reward. It's knowing that I'm with you. You know, our values. It's normal for us to see and view our identity through other people. I get that. I face that too. I walk in that. Sometimes people just love you and have nice things to say and then on the flip of a dime it can turn and they, they don't anymore. And when we view ourselves that way, the way through the lens of other people's eyes or through our mistakes, it's, it's a life that nobody was meant to live. 
The scripture tells us that God sees us and he sees us through our trials. He tells us to rejoice, he says, because through these tough things that you face, I am working in you an eternal weight of glory. I don't know what an eternal weight of glory is worth, but I'm believing it's a heck of a lot more than the Canadian dollar. <laughs> Seriously, I bet it is. And better than that, the eternal weight of glory that he is working in us, it's an eternal weight of glory. It's like it's good now. It's good a thousand years from now, and it's going to be good a million years and a billion years. The weight of glory that he is producing, the value, it's not on a, any, any currency level that we can even relate to. And furthermore, it never runs out and changes. It's an eternal weight of glory. That's how he wants us to view our lives, that in him, what he is producing, the value cannot even be measured. I have a little illustration I want to close with today. I just have to grab a few props. I hope you forgive me. Cheryl, I hope you forgive me. <laughs> this is one of those things that, you know, it could go really well. going to need some of this. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what this is soon. I'm going to need this, too. <laughs> Don't leave home without your wubba hammer. <laughs> What's this? What you owe me. <laughs> Peter will talk later. <laughs> this is a crisp and clean, mean looking Canadian 50, worth actually a couple of US dimes. But you know, it looks really good, doesn't it? It's crisp and clean, and you can, you know, you can buy some things with it here. It's not really valuable, but it's, you know, it's not worth kicking to the side, too. You know? Who here would value having a $50 bill? Yeah, there's a few. Peter, well, he thinks it's his $50 bill. <laughs> yeah? So, this is value. Five zero, but uh, you know, I wonder if I can change your mind. Sarah, could you come here? You understand the value of this bill? Yeah, and you want it. I'm not saying you can have it, but you would want it. Yeah, okay. Do you still see the value of this bill? You would still want it. Do you know where this bill has been? Do you know what I've done to this bill? And you still want it? I'm not saying you can have it, you just stay there. Grant, could you come here? Come stand here. Look at them boots. Those boots weren't made for walking. They're made for stomping. Do your worst. You can 
can even call it a bad name if you want. Just PG. <laughs> Keep, just give it. Kick it a few times. Kick it off the stage. Stupid Bill. Rotten Bill. Yeah. A couple more times. Okay. Thank you, Grant. <laughs> Sarah, would you still want this bill? You still see some value in this? Do you know where those boots have been? No? Do you know what was said about this bill? And you still want it? Okay. Thank you, Grant. I'm not done. You can go. Please go. <laughs> Good job, Grant. I'll do this so you can see. This bill might look like something on the outside, but I have a vengeance <laughs> against this bill. It's been to some nasty, bad places. It's bought some bad things. Brussels sprouts. Oh! Cilantro. Oh! You still want this bill? Even knowing that? You still see value in this thing? I don't see any worth, anything good in this thing. This thing has caused me trouble. It's spoken nasty things to me while in my wallet. <laughs> it's wanted to buy things that I know I can't buy. <laughs> Jerk. Now look at your nice bill. <laughs> you still see value in this? You still want it? Didn't say you can have it. <laughs> I've got one last test. I'm sure this one's going to turn you. <laughs> Folks, what I have here is a bag of vacuum cleaner dirt. <laughs> Freshly picked. Goody two shoes, 50. Take that, brother. <laughs> Filth, dirt, scum of the earth. <laughs> Nobody could want that piece of garbage. <laughs> Nobody likes it, at least the people that know it. It's been around all kinds of places. It's done all kinds of things. Sarah? <laughs> That's why I got the sanitary... Uh the COVID safe. I'm not heartless.
It's everywhere in our house, let me tell you. Oh, look at that. Sarah, do you still see value in this bill? Would you want this? It's yours. You know what? I don't know what that bill thought about itself. But it sounds to me like there was a room full of people that even though that was a dirty, disgusting, beat up, been stomped on, done who knows what, there was still some real value in that thing. And you know what I believe? We need to take that into our heart today. What do you think about yourself because of what... Have, has anybody been in a Ziploc bag with vacuum dirt? <laughs> and had that choked and hammered on you and pounded on? God wants you to know today that it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've been through, what people have said about you, and how nasty even the pastor has been to them. <laughs> God loves you and he sees value in you and he wants to be your great reward. But you will only draw near to God when you know that he accepts you and that he wants you. Because if you have fear of punishment, if you have fear that what you have done is blocking you from your relationship with God, it will cause you to hold back, it will cause you to step back, it will cause you to distance yourself from God and coming near to him. But just like this, what we saw today, and I know it's kind of crazy. I believe it very accurately represents how God feels about each and every one of us here and how much he wants to be a part of our lives. Let's stand as we close this morning. Heavenly Father, we just come before you as your children today. I want to encourage you, lift your hands. If you don't lift your hands, then, you know, lift a hand, a finger. Uh, lift your nose a little bit. Whatever. Turn your eyes to God this morning. And God, Lord, we as your children, we know that we are flawed and that we have made mistakes, that we have blown it at times. And Lord, we know that we don't deserve your loving kindness and your favor. But God, we know from what your word says that we are loved, that we are accepted, and that you desire us wholeheartedly to be a part of your life and of your family. And God, I pray today for every person in this room that, Lord, you would so stamp this into our hearts and into our spirits that the value that we have is based on what you see and not on where we've been or what we've done. And that stuff that we've been through or maybe processing through now is never enough to negate the grace and the goodness of God or to be stronger than the power of the cross. And so, Lord, today we take steps towards you. We move towards you in our hearts, and God, we say we want you to be our very great and exceeding reward. And we, from this day forward, we're going to begin coming towards you with boldness and with confidence that, Lord, you love us and you want us. And I pray that you would seal that in our hearts and in our spirits today. For your glory, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sorry about the mess here. Amen. Thanks for that awesome word. So we just encourage you as you're leaving today, make sure you sign up for home group. Uh, just go to groups.phclc.org. Or, and also uh, encourage you participating in the three days of prayer and fasting. And join us Wednesday night right here at 7 o'clock for worship and corporate prayer. God bless you. Have a great weekend.